In this video, we're going to look at how to uh, compute a confidence interval around a population standard deviation or variance that's pretty much the same way. You just have to take a uh, square root for standard deviation, you leave it alone for variance. <clears throat> and we're going to look at how to do it with the formulas and then also with some technology. Now, the TI-83 calculator does not have a function for calculating confidence intervals for uh, variances and standard deviations. There are programs you can download for it if you know how to add programs to your calculator that will do it. Uh, I believe the 89 and the Inspire, the, uh, the more expensive newer models, can do them. Uh, so if you're stuck with the older TI like myself, uh, you can't use it for these. You can do it in Excel and Minitab and StatDisk and StatCrunch and all sorts of online sites like Vassar Stats and places like that. So there's plenty of opportunities to do this. I'm going to show you how to do it with the formulas and then with StatCrunch. <clears throat> okay, just a little review of the difference between dealing with confidence intervals for standard deviations versus confidence intervals for uh, means and proportions. With means and proportions, we had very similar formulas where it was something plus and minus e. This one is different because we no longer have a symmetrical distribution, right? With means and proportions, we were dealing with either the normal curve and, and z-scores or the student t-distribution and t-scores. And both of those distributions are symmetrical. They both look like the normal curve. They're centered at zero. You get a positive and negative uh, answers that are equidistant from the mean of zero. But with uh, variances and standard deviations, we're now dealing with the chi-square distribution. And the chi-square distribution is not symmetrical. And it is not centered at zero. As the name implies, it is built off of things that are squared. Therefore, the smallest value is 0, right? and it starts with 0 and goes out. Now, as your degrees of freedom get larger, the curve gets more symmetrical. But it still is never centered at 0. right? So you still don't have those plus and minus values. So you always have to calculate both a left and a right chi-square. And no, those are not in the wrong place they get switched because of some math that you do, some algebra, and that's why they end up on what seems like the wrong side of your equations. Okay, let's look at how to do these um, by hand. So we'll take a look at a simple example where we have wait times uh, at a bank, and they do it two different ways. <clears throat> so these wait times in minutes are customers that enter a single waiting line and then when you get to the front of the line you go to one of three windows that are available and you guys have all seen those kind of serpentine uh, waiting lines and we're going to construct a 95 percent confidence interval for the population standard deviation all right so if instead of just a sample of of this many one two three four five six seven eight nine ten people we looked at all customers from jefferson valley bank we're going to construct a 95% confidence interval for the standard deviation of all of those wait times. And then down here are wait times for 10 different customers. And this time they entered three different lines. So they basically lined up in front of the teller they wanted to go to. And then we're going to construct a 95% confidence interval for those um, times. And then we're going to interpret the, the difference between the two. So the first thing we're going to need to do um, in order to run the numbers, right? If you look at the formulas here, to do a confidence interval around a variance, now see this is a variance, not a standard deviation, because that's sigma squared. To do um, standard deviation, you just have to take square root of everything, right? So you just get the square root of this stuff, and the square root of this stuff, and then when you take the square root of the middle, you get just the standard deviation, right? So it's really the same formula, just taking square roots. Okay, well, if you look at the formulas, what do we have to do? We have to do n minus 1. Well, our sample size is 10, right? n equals 10 here, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. n equals 10 down here as well. All right, we need s squared. So we need the variance of these two samples. We're going to have to calculate those. And then we're going to need to figure out what these chi-squared 
R and L's are. Well, let's do the, um, the chi-squared uh, L and R's first. So basically, we're doing the same thing we've done before with um, other distributions, only now we're doing it on a chi-squared distribution, where before we found what the Z's and the T's were that cut off a certain amount in the middle. In this case, we're being 95% confident. So we have 95% of our data in the middle, which means alpha equals 5%, right? And then in this tail is going to be 2.5%, and then in this tail is going to be the other 2.5%. And we're just trying to figure out what are the chi-squares that give us this much, right, area in between. And it's going to be based on our uh, sample size, because that's our we got to do degrees of freedom, right? Degrees of freedom equals n minus 1, which equals 9, which also gives us, gives us a piece of our formula. Okay, and then because these are going to be two different numbers, right? Because remember, it's not symmetrical, so we don't have a positive and negative version of the same number. We give them different names just to keep track of them. And so the r just means the one that is on the right, and the l means the one that's on the left. I myself like lower and upper um, because then it, it doesn't make so much difference when you switch places with them and you don't see that you know right is on the left and left is on the right. They're just different names and then it's not such a big deal that they're in the wrong place in the formula. But anyhow, a lot of books call them left and right. Okay, we just need to look these up either in a table and with a sample size this small of 10, you should probably be able to find a table that's fairly accurate. Or you can do it with technology. Technology is obviously the better way because it's the more accurate way. So let's figure out uh, what they are from technology. In StatCrunch, we're going to go back to our calculators, right? Because that's how we do all of our distributions and find all of our critical values. We have a chi-square distribution, so we're using the chi-square calculator. Up it pops, right? We've got to give it degrees of freedom. Now remember, it's asking for degrees of freedom, not sample size. So we have to change that to nine. Let's look for the uh, the left hand one first. So we'll leave it as below, and we just give it the um, amount of area below. So two and a half percent. Compute that. The picture looks about right. Right, that's two and a half percent, and we get this number: two point seven, blah 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 blah. Okay, quick and easy. Now let's do the same thing for the upper. So we're going to change this to above. And then we have to change this back again to 0, 2, 5 for 2.5%. Two All right, the picture matches. That's just a little small bit on the top. And then here's our number. And now we have our two chi-squares right here. Again, I would um, you know carry as many decimal places as you can handle. Uh, and definitely carry at least two more decimal places than the final answer requires. Okay, the next thing we need is the S squared, the variance of our data. So throw your data into a calculator or StatCrunch or whatever you got to do to calculate the um, variance of your set of data. Okay, I went ahead and uh, computed a couple things for both lists. I did the mean and uh, the variance for both of these lists just so we can point out some things uh, later when we. Um, talk about the differences between when we try and interpret this stuff for part C. So this column here is the mean wait time and this is the variance. Now be careful when you're uh, doing these types of questions if they give you um, summary statistics instead of raw data oftentimes they'll give you the standard deviation S and you gotta remember that you have to square that first to use the variance because remember variances are unbiased estimators so we want to use those in our calculations, which is why all of these calculations are based on the variance and not the standard deviation. So you have to first square your standard deviation, use the variance, put in the formulas, get an answer, and then if you want to report back a confidence interval for a standard deviation, as we do in this one, then you have to remember to also square root your answers. All right, put them into the formulas, pretty simple. So um, let's write these out. The, the left hand side, right, the, the lower side is n minus 1, which is just 9, times s squared, so 
seven and I'm just going to do two two seven again just for space I would recommend you guys do as many decimals as you can or at least two more than you need at the end my uh, right hand side chi squared is this one so nineteen point zero two three let's say that's going to be less than sigma squared, remember? So let's go ahead and remind ourselves that if we want to do sigma, we're going to have to square root this whole thing. And then that's going to be less than square root of the right hand side, which is again going to be 9. And then the same s, right? 227, s squared, sorry. And then our different bottom number, so now it's the left hand one, which is 2.7, you know, zero, zero, so just really 2.7 if we want to round to that few decimals. All right, throw all that into your uh, calculator, and you should get the following result. Okay, so there's our first one I'll, in black, right? I'll put black for this color. And you can see now that uh, according to the formulas, um, the standard deviation, because we took square roots, right, and then sigma, so the population standard deviation is somewhere between 0.3, almost 3.3, 3, and 0.87, and these are in minutes, right, because these waiting times are in minutes. So a pretty small spread, so it looks like, and you can see from the, from the data, everybody had roughly the same waiting time. It wasn't like somebody got done really quickly and somebody took a really long time. And in fact, the two lists have the exact same average, and that will make a big difference later when we talk about how to interpret these. Okay, let's do the other list uh, in green, All right? so you can see the difference. And now, really the only difference is the number, right, for s squared. Everything else is still the same. So we have the square root of 9, but this time times 3.31. 8 if we want to go that high. Again, since we still have a sample size of 10, we have the same exact distribution for our chi-squares, which means we have the same exact left and right-hand chi-squares. So we have the same numbers here of 19.023, right? So these numbers aren't the same because it's the same question. They're the same because the two samples were the same sample size. With a different sample size, you get a different degree of freedom, and you get a different shaped chi-square, and you get different numbers, right? I mean, just look at these pictures. If we wanted to cut off 5% here, it would be somewhere way down here. But if we wanted to cut off 5% for this curve, it would be somewhere up here, right? So we got something around 2.5, now we got something around 10. So the degree of freedom is going to drastically change uh, where these numbers lie. All right, the other side, still the 9, right? The 3.318, and then the 2.7. All right, throw those in your calculator, and you should get. And you can see that now uh, the range of your population standard deviation is not only is the range bigger, but the numbers are bigger, right? Instead of uh, having a, a difference somewhere between 0.3 to point, let's say 9, you know, 0.87 of a minute, you've got somewhere between one and a quarter minutes to three and a third minutes. So there's a much bigger spread. And again, if you look at the numbers, you can see that. Some people had a really short waiting time of 4.2. Others had really long times. So even though the average was the same, uh, you get the, the lower and the higher amounts. And we've all witnessed this in real life. You know, you, you go somewhere that has multiple lines, and you pick one, and then you sit there and go, ah, damn it, I picked the wrong one. That other one's moving so much faster than my line. How many times do you remember picking the fast line? Right? Nobody remembers picking the fast line. I, we all know it must have happened just by sheer probability. It must have happened. But we only remember the times when we got stuck in that crappy short line, the one that took forever. Right, So that's why most banks and most companies, when they can, create the single serpentine line that then feeds all of their multiple checkers or tellers or whatever they have. because when you do the statistics, and, and these numbers are, yes, pretty much made up, but in real life it tends to work this way as well. The average wait time is pretty much the same in both setups, but when everybody gets in one line, everybody tends to have a similar experience. They all 
seem to weight the same amount, right? There's much less variation in their wait times versus individual lines. You're playing that game of picking the right one and picking the wrong and picking the wrong one. So if you were to ask your customers um, to fill out a, a card to tell you how satisfied they were with their shopping experience or their banking experience or whatever it was, this group would have everybody would be, you know, moderately happy to pretty happy. They'd, they'd all be in the middle. Some would think, okay, maybe the white was a little too long. Some would think the weight was just right. Some would think that it went kind of fast. But they would all kind of be clumped together. In this case, you'd have a couple that would think, hey, this was a great. You'd have some that thought it was um, just about right. And then you'd have a, a, a few that thought it was horrible. Right? So you basically get more angry customers this way than you do this way. In this way, everybody's just kind of like, eh, it's no big deal, we all waited the same amount. But in this case, you get more customer complaints. So having one serpentine line, which gives you a, a smaller variation in wait times, which gives you a smaller standard deviation, that tends to have less customer complaints. So that's why the single line system is the better system, even though they both have the same um, average wait time. Okay, let's see how to do this very quickly in StatCrunch, although I would really recommend doing these with uh, the formulas, guys. It's, it's very simple, and with StatCrunch, there are so many places where you can make a mistake. Okay, in StatCrunch, um, if you're given the raw data, then that's what you should use. That's definitely uh, the safer way to do it. But if you're not given the raw data, then it gets a little tricky because look what happens. If you go stat, see there's no option for standard deviation statistics. There's only variance statistics. Even though this question was asking us to calculate um, a confidence interval around a standard deviation, we have to do it with variance. We had one sample. Now I know we had two samples, but we're not comparing the two. We're doing one sample each, right? We're, we're doing them individually, so it's still a one sample. If we do it with summary, look what it asks for. Sample variance and then sample size. I calculated sample variance from these numbers and I wrote it on the slide. But what will often happen is if you're given just the information, if you're given a summary of the information in the question, they will oftentimes give you the um, information as the sample standard deviation. And then you got to remember to square it before you put it in here. Okay, so that that's one place where you can um, easily make a mistake. Okay, our first group had 0.227222222, I think was, it. and then a sample size of 10. We're doing a confidence interval. Um, it was 95%. Remember, we had two and a half on both sides. We hit compute, and if we move this, we will see that the numbers we have here in StatCrunch are nowhere close to the numbers we got um, in our calculations. Why is that? What's wrong? Well, you have to pay attention that the numbers you get out of StatCrunch is the confidence interval for the variance, and we wanted the confidence interval for the standard deviation. So these are the numbers that haven't been square rooted. So if you plug that into your calculator and actually do the square root of each of those numbers, you'll see that you get the same answer. So for instance, you do the square root of 0 0.1075, and you get 0.3278 blah 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 the same number right so there's the second place where you can make a mistake if you're using stat crunches forget that the answers they give you are going to be in terms of the variance and you always have to take square roots all right i'm not going to show you how to do the second one because it's the same thing again right but that's how you can do it by hand and with technology um, i would suggest by hand it's the safer way really because then all you have to worry about is typing something into your calculator wrong Hope this helps.